what's your question? Right, so if you have read and understood considering the critical care scenario, kindly tell me, how do you think sh this patient should be managed now? Uh, so ma'am, this patient will be managed as per the ATLS protocol. Yes. Uh, I'll go for the airway first. Uh, since this patient has a low GECS, I would assume that the patient's airway is also not um, cleared. So um, I'll, uh, this patient will require, uh, if there is any um, debris in the mouth or so, since uh, this is RTA, uh, if there is debris, I would like to do a jaw, a chin lift jaw thrust maneuver to clear of him of any debris in the airway. Uh, the GCS is slow, have to put in an oropharyngeal uh, airway or the giddles, we call it. And this patient requires emergency for urgent um endotracheal uh, incubation. What else would you do? You, you'll tilt the head? Uh, Ma'am, uh, we'll tilt the, the head. The but, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, so we'll uh, put the head end up at, uh, say, 30 degrees. Yes. And, and um, we... Uh, Ma'am, neck has to be supported with a cervical collar and yes. in, uh, in line is fine mobilization. Yes. Has to then, be done. Uh, after A, then you moved on to B. So, so, uh, yes. so ma'am, uh, simultaneously, I'll be putting in an oxygen mask or yes. the after if we have intubated him, we'll attach it to the oxygen. We'll check his uh, vitals simultaneously, check for the respiratory movements, if there is any cyanosis, any obvious uh, injuries on the chest, if the chest is moving symmetrically or not after exposing him. Uh, that would be uh, for the breathing, the breathing. for circulation, you... have to put in the... Yes, you will be intubating. So how would be the control ventilation? How would you... Yes. Uh, the... Ma'am, the control... Ma'am, ma we'll put him on the... Uh, you'll have to... After the confirmation of the um, ETT, We'll put him on the ventilator settings, yes. and we this, the patient's already GCS is low, so I am not sure if we will he'll require any sedation uh, at this point in time. Okay, but how would be the setting of the ventilator? How would you keep the partial pressure of carbon dioxide at what KPA? Uh, Ma'am, uh, the partial pressure of uh, carbon dioxide, as far as I can recall, I think we keep it a little on a lower side. Okay. Uh, partial pressure of carbon dioxide. Yeah, I think so. All right. Then uh, what else would you do? How would you take care of patients' vitals? Uh, so, ma'am, since we'll be doing all these things simultaneously, uh, for circulation, we'll be putting two large IV bore cannulas in the anticubital fossa, uh, check the pulse rate, check his blood pressures, uh, put in a urine catheter, send all the basic baseline tests along with blood tests uh, for uh, investigations and um, simultaneously start resuscitation with the isotonic crystalloid. Okay. Uh, which diuretic and would you consider if we, at this stage and why? Ma'am, I would like to give uh, mannitol to this patient, osmotic diuretic, because yes. this patient has a head injury. Yes. So there is a cerebral edema. To reduce cerebral edema, we'll give mannitol uh, yes. as a bolus. It's around 10 to 15 mg per kg yes. uh, initially. And then... How, um, how is it given? Over how much? How many minutes? Or... Uh, Ma'am, minutes, I'm sorry. I do not uh, okay. recall. Sorry. Uh, what is the action of os osmotic diuretic? What does it do? 
So, uh, ma'am, osmotic diuretic basically it attracts the water. This uh, mannitol itself it attracts water towards it. So, um, with the help when it attracts water, it will reduce the cerebral edema. The interstitial edema is reduced, and uh, the diuresis will be via the help of increased urine output. Good. Okay. Considering the nice guidelines, when should you ask for CT scan, CT head? So, uh, ma'am, there are two criteria. One is the high risk and the medium risk. So, uh, high risk criteria is if the patient has, um, if the patient drops GCS, uh, uh, yeah, if the GCS is dropped after, uh, I don't know, one hour to the uh, injury, if there is open skull base fracture, if you are, if there is open skull base fracture, or if you are suspecting him to have a Okay, it's, open uh, skull fracture hours. and it's a basilar fracture. Hours. It's after two hours. Okay, and then two age, hours. All right. Age over sixty-five. Yeah. Age over sixty-five. If the patient is uh, on uh, anticoagulants and has a head injury, yes. if the patient has raccoon eyes, battle sign is there. The patient has CSF otoria, rhinorrhea, which is the uh, basically basilar skull fracture. Uh, in that case, and if two episodes of vomiting. Uh, okay. And the medium criteria is if the patient has. Uh, amnesic even if the patient uh, has dangerous mechanism a fall from the height two okay. feet or if a motorcyclist is ejected uh, through the vehicle okay. or passenger hit by a moving car uh, oh yeah or uh, yeah can you please tell me what caused drop of glossocoma scale in this patient so, ma'am, most likely this patient is having a um, epidural um, hematoma Extradural, I'm sorry, extradural hematoma. How would you this know, is a lucid you know interval. It is extradural. Uh, how would you expect I'll, I'll... it to find on CT scan? Can you help me to read this? So, ma'am, uh, this is, uh, we have a large hyperdense area, uh, yes. which is biconvex. Uh, okay. There is a midline shift and there is compression on the ventricle in this um, CT scan image. Good. All right. Can you please tell me, is there a way that uh, you can measure intracranial pressure? Uh, Ma'am, intracranial pressure can be measured with the help of uh, intraparenchymal uh, probes. Uh, there are interventricular drains, uh, subparenchymal catheters. Uh, there can be um, extraventricular drains or catheter, we call it. Uh, can you... Tell me the pathophysiology behind the increased intracranial pressure. Uh, Ma'am, that is based on the Monroe Kelly doctrine. The doctrine yes. says that the skull is a rigid box. It has three components, the blood, the CSF, and um, this one brain itself. So okay. when one component is increased, uh, the other component decreases as a compensation. But when there is persistently rise in one component there are the uh, the brain fails to decompensate and a small rise in one component uh, will cause a tremendous rise in the intracranial pressure good okay can you please tell me how should and uh, okay uh, what causes dilatation of the in case of increased intracranial pressure what causes the dilatation of the pupil uh, Ma'am, that will be because of the um, oculomotor nerve, uh, the compression on the oculomotor nerve, uh, yes. because of which there will be dilatation. Okay, uh, if you yes. have to, not, in, not saying in this case, but if you have to take the lumbar puncture, what are the layers a uh, needle will pierce from outside to inside? So there will be skin, there will be subcutaneous fat, there is a... Uh, posterior spinous ligament, interspinous ligament. Uh, then you have a ligamentum flavum. Uh, then you have epidural space. You enter the um, yeah, posterior spinous, interspinous ligamentum flavum, epidural space, and then you enter the dura, and then you'll have the um, subdural space, and then the arachnoid matter uh, or the CSF. Good. Okay. Right, good, okay, uh, right, very good, thank you. Thank you, ma'am.
starting your timer and